welcome to Two Black Talks. I'm your host, T, and today I have some campus leaders to discuss the topic of colorism. Today's question is, does light skin privilege exist? Wow. <laughs> Who wants to go first? I don't want to go first. It's light skin. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, I feel like it does exist. Okay. Um, if you look at the history from where it was created, it created from slavery when you had the divide of the house Negroes and the Negroes that were out in the field. Mm. So the Negroes who were out in the field were the darker complected Negroes and the Negroes who were in the house were lighter complected Negroes. Nine out of ten times they were also the children of the slave owners. Mm. Now the stigma that is that is that is known is that one was treated better than the other but in retrospect they were both treated equally just from different viewpoints. So because of that as history went on, society looks at people with lighter complexion as more attractive. It's the uh, whitewashing of America. So even though they do get discriminated just as anyone else of color, mm. they are looked at as prettier or better or smarter or have more money because of their complexion. That's a fact. So who thinks no? Who thinks it's not a thing? It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist. It doesn't, yeah, it doesn't exist. Okay, so um, what would you think, what would you say some struggles that, you know, light-skinned girls would face? Um, I guess the only thing would be like, you know, the stereotype, like light-skinned girls are easier to handle or mm -hmm. they're like not, they're not assertive at all or anything. It's kind of like bubbly image that people get light-skinned girls. but. I wouldn't call that a struggle. I think it's something that like we experience, but I wouldn't want to call it a struggle. Mm -hmm. I hear like uh, another perspective. Like I have friends, I feel like they'll share with me that like, or even things I've watched, I've heard light-skinned girls be like, oh, sometimes they feel like they're, they're not black enough or not like, you know, like they get ridiculed because of the, the way people perceive them. You know what I'm saying? So because you get like all this glory for being light-skinned, like, they feel like some black girls will shun them for that. Yeah, um, I think sometimes you do experience that, like, not black enough, so, like, black people kind of look at you and feel like you have a leg up because you're light-skinned, and then mm -hmm. it's like, at the end of the day, a white person can still look at me and call me a nigga at the end of the day. Like, yeah. So, it's like, you do kind of experience darker skinned people looking at you like, oh, you have a leg up, like, what do you have to complain about? But it's like, I'm still black, and I still go through... Right. The same things that you go through when when it comes to like corporate America or just America cut in general. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, how do you do you think that um, hair texture has anything to do with colorism? Does that play any part in that? I feel like it, it depends. As like if you wear your hair out, because I know a lot of black women are starting to wear their hair out, love their natural hair, and even. Even with little kids, from little kids to adults, they get criticized by their hair complex. I mean, their hair texture. Um, I don't know if y'all heard about the little girl that went to the daycare, and like she had, I think she had no, I forgot what her hairstyle was, but mm -hmm. it was braids of some sort, mm -hmm. and they tried to discriminate against her because I guess she went to a mostly like white daycare type mm -hmm. of thing. So yeah. I didn't hear about that. Me either. It's, it's, I feel like it is a problem, too, because sometimes they always consider in natural hair as, like, unprofessional or unkept or something like that. But, like, if I don't want to, like, you know, damage my hair, either damage my hair or wear weave is, like, my only option to look professional, it's like, we just got to change the standard for ourselves, basically. But I feel like that's definitely become a lot more prevalent as I got older. Like, I've never seen more natural girls in my life till I got older. Like, when I was younger, if you ain't have a perm, you ain't know the word. Like, that's it. Like, yeah. it wasn't in, like, what are you doing? Like, I think, if you didn't have your shit straight. And I feel like, I think I could see, like, more now, like, than ever, like we just said. Yeah. Because I, like, when I was, I have a twin, like I said. So when I was younger, like, she, like, on Easter, like, my mother would be hot combing her hair, perming her hair, making sure her hair was flat. But then now, like I have a little sister now, she's seven. Mm -hmm. My mother doesn't put anything to her hair. She, mm -hmm. she, you know, she conditions it, makes sure like it's natural, keeps her her bobos in, keeps her mm -hmm. puffs in. Like so, I like I'm loving that vibe and I love it. But I just don't think that it connects with 
colorism per se. I just think that it connects with how people just view, you know, the actual girl mm -hmm. or just the girl in general. Because I kind of feel like, and it makes me like feel like bad, especially when colorism is like shown, especially in schools and, and just in general. Because even when I was younger, I didn't know what color was. So me not knowing what color was was also a bad thing, but it was it was a good thing as well. But then I knew enough about my blackness when I was younger to know that my twin is a little bit darker than me. To know that my twin's friends is a little bit darker than me. So whenever it would be like arguments and stuff like that, I would go for where it hurts and mm -hmm. try to come at her for right. how dark she is. Mm -hmm. And I know it's like it's not okay. Mm -hmm. Now I know it's not okay. But yeah. then it was like back then, I mean, you no. Know, and teachers were here too. Yeah. Like we were arguing when teachers would be here. We be calling girls stuff like burnt eagles, mm -hmm. bad, like just horrible. Mm -hmm. Teachers were here. I don't feel like teachers and so are equipped enough to call out things like that and mm -hmm. say this is not okay are they not equipped or do they not want to I address know, the issues mm, I I can relate that's to the that. question because it's like there are people i mean i mean there are are like people that are um, like people that are oblivious i guess to sometimes the, some of the little things that we face but there's some things that's outright you know you know that's unacceptable yeah. and there's certain things you intervene in whether or not you yourself know you'll bring it to a high level as a teacher, I feel like that would be your responsibility. That goes into the conversation of why we need more black teachers. That's a whole yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. other yeah. conversation. But oh, I, I, feel, I feel that hair texture does have something to do with colorism. And the reason why I say this is because it's not just in what we would say white America, it's also in our communities. Mm. Because if you are African American and you are lighter complected and your hair is coiled, 4C texture, people will come to you and be like, why is your hair so nappy? Right. But okay, if her okay. hair was more of a let's see a three C or, a, or something like that, yeah. oh, it's so beautiful. You have good hair. I wish my hair was like hair. yours. Right. And as you can see, mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. and, for C, and for years, for years, when I first went natural, I was twelve years old. This right. was back in two thousand eight when we were still relaxing our hairs, hot combing it. My grandma inspired me to go natural. So when I went through the transition living in Ohio at the time, I was okay because I was still, like, my friends accepted me for where I was. Right. That's where I grew up. That's where I was from. When I came to New York, to Niagara Falls, New York, at that, first of all, I don't know if you know anything about Niagara Falls, New York, but it's, it's just ratchet as hell. <laughs> <laughs> to, to everybody at the time, that's when the high ponytails was in with the colored bangs and everyone was slicking their hair back and everybody was wearing the lace fronts. And I'm not talking about the good lace fronts that we got now today. I'm talking about the store, like you go to the, the back store. Hair. That's the pack yeah, 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 yeah. type of lace fronts. And I was walking around with my ass <laughs> with my, my natural curls and people would come to me and say, why does your hair look like that? And this, I'm like, this is my natural hair. And then people were like, can I touch it? And sometimes I would say yes, sometimes I would say no. Mm -hmm. But you know, because it's somebody who looks like me, I'm like, sure, you can touch my hair. And they would mm -hmm. say to me, well, I didn't expect it to be soft. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what is that supposed to mean? Yeah. Yeah. So for, for, I had a love-hate relationship with my hair for years. And even to this day, like, I would be with my friends and I would look at their hair and I'm like, wow, it must be nice to just throw some water on it. And go <laughs> but I can do that too. I just got to add, like, you know, some conditioner, sure. some, if I you know, some oil. oil. And it's shorter now. But yeah, that's, I'm really not about to get all this hat. It's just, it's about self-love. Right. Yeah. It's about yeah. self-love and accepting who you are. This is good hair. That's yeah. All hair is good hair. It doesn't no. matter how much it's damaged. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it's not oh, gonna be what your hair like, bro. And then your hair could be more than one texture too. Mm -hmm. So you gotta think about all the different textures that's in there and how your hair relaxes. You have to also touch the porosity of your hair. You gotta get in tune with that though. Go search that up. You with the water. Yeah, yeah, test the porosity of your hair. See what type of products is dope mm -hmm. in. BT just it's had. I just I was on Facebook two days ago. Mm -hmm. BT had this thing called Just Fab or Two Fab or something like that on their page, and it was talking about the the amount of money black women in America spent on hair products. And it is crazy. I'm talking about thousands and thousands of dollars a year because of the type of stuff we have to put in our hair to cater to our texture because we require more moisture and we require more oils in our hair. So basically to wrap it up, you just have to cater to your hair. You have to love your hair and know what kind of hair you have. But I was saying like to develop on like colorism, I feel like it's hard to feel comfortable with being yourself because you have like this whole issue of colorism promoted by white people, but it's also carried on by the black community. So it's kind of like when I was younger and I'm sitting there bashing other people who are different skin tones than me, I'm bashing them, but I'm not even knowing why, but I'm just targeting their skin. Mm. And like it's stuff like that and teachers are not equipped to help, but then it's like, oh, okay, growing up, now these kids really don't feel comfortable. And I feel like it's kind of discouraging because we are all black and we, all of our skin glows in the light. Like, right. we magical, yes. like, we're different. And nobody else, we don't got to put on sunscreen when we go outside to the beach. <laughs> like, I'm saying, like... People be like, oh, yeah, we do. But we, we probably do. We, we, I ain't never got sunburned. I never got a baby you oil. Should. Nothing you should. Nothing crazy. You should. 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 But you don't need to. And our skin was made, to. our skin yeah. was made to protect us from exactly. Yeah. So being so magical, I hate to see when like we like discourage each other because of our skin color. Yeah, that's a fact. Thank you for tuning in to Two Black TV. Follow us on IG at T O B L K T V for updates. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.